Hello and welcome to St Thomas's online evening service. It's good to have you here and I hope you've had a good day however you've chosen to spend it. I hope also that you were able to watch our morning service where Stephen continued our series in Romans, um, preaching on Romans 7. If you haven't had a chance to do that, do go and have a look on our YouTube channel where you can see that and the other sermons that have been preached um, since the start of lockdown. I also want to um, welcome anyone that's um, here for the first time or is only really um, started watching since um, lockdown. We're so thankful to have you here and we hope you found these um, sermons encouraging and we look forward to welcoming you when we're able to in person. It's good to be able to hear God's word in this digital way, but it's still just not quite the same as meeting together personally and physically. And that's how God designed us to be. So my personal encouragement to everyone watching and to especially St Thomas regulars is be really intentional about trying to meet up with people if that's responsible to do so. And uh, if you can't do that, to call people, email, however you choose to do that on, on Zoom uh, with home groups. And be really intentional about seeking every way in which we can encourage one another in this time where we're still not able to worship our creator God physically together. And we had hoped to have the chance to stream a test service from the church building this evening. Unfortunately the cameras were not quite installed uh, by yesterday as I'd hoped. Instead that they're going to be installed later this week. So we're still hoping to have a full test on next Sunday where um, we will hopefully have Stephen preaching and the worship group there but still um, unfortunately unable to have uh, other people there with hopefully God willing then a chance for um, a number of us to come together on the 4th of October to worship God physically. If you want to take part in that service, again God willing, then please get in touch with the office um, if you haven't received an email about that and Suzanne will uh, be able to help you out with how to book into into that service. Uh, as we understand, I'm sure you understand, we might not be able to get everyone in if uh, everyone says they want to come because of social distancing, but hopefully we can get as many people as possible to worship together in that way. This evening Stephen is going to be preaching on James chapter 4 where we can find strength um, from God in temptation, carrying on the series of the promises carried by the promises of God. He had previously recorded this sermon just in case uh, the streaming went wrong on Sunday. Obviously we know that we're not able to stream but um, I'm sure knowing Stephen he'll make some kind of joke at the start so that will make a lot more sense um, uh, knowing what, what I've just said. And before we do that Joanna is going to read the passage that Stephen's going to be preaching from and before um, I hand over to Joanna I'm going to pray for us now. Heavenly Father thank you for your son Jesus. Thank you that he's, you sent him to this earth, that he humbled himself and that he died on the cross for our sakes. Lord we know that you are in charge of all things and Lord Jesus came and suffered for us and we thank you. We thank you that you created this world and you love us and you want us to have a relationship with you and that is possible because your son's death on the cross. Lord we know that you are in control of this pandemic and that you have good purposes for it for those that know and love you because your word promises that. Lord we don't understand uh, everything that's going on but Lord help us to trust you and to put our faith in you. Heavenly Father, we long to be able to meet up together to worship you as church as you've designed. Lord, help us to um, wait for that time patiently. But Lord, help us to look even more fervently for the time where we will see you face to face in glory and know that even uh, church in its physical form is just a taste of that. Lord, we long for that time and Lord, we pray that um, the seeming increase in, in COVID cases at the moment would not frustrate um, the plans that we have to meet together. Lord, that you would help us as a church, you would give great wisdom to the leadership 
to be able to uh, navigate the, the difficulties that are going on while also seeking to um, do what you've designed us to do and, and meet and worship together. Lord, we pray for our government in this time where continuing uh, difficult decisions have to be made daily. Lord, give them great wisdom. And Lord, help them as a result of this pandemic to see their need for you and to be drawn into a saving and loving relationship with you. Lord, I pray for this evening. Thank you for the sermon that's this sermon that Stephen has um, recorded. Lord, I pray that you bless his time that he spent preparing for that, and that you would have blessed his heart and encouraged him. And Lord, for the same for us, that we'd be encouraged to trust in you when temptation comes and know that all strength that we need can be found in you. Lord, challenge us, uh, keep us alert as we as we watch and Lord, really uh, move in our lives as a result of your word. Help us to be doers and not just hearers. And I pray this for your son's name. Amen. The reading this evening is from James chapter 4 and verse 1 to 10. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and you fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? But he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says God opposes the proud but shows favour to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Good evening, and welcome to St Thomas Baptist Church. Again this evening, thank you for joining with us um, on this Sunday evening, or whatever time of the week you're watching. I know some of you watch at a different times because of different things going on in your life. Now, if you're watching this version, um, then this is the one we made earlier because the hope is that um, we're going to do this, we were to do this live and live stream onto YouTube. And um, if that's not what you're listening to, then something's gone wrong with the technology. And in the words of Blue Peter, Here's one we made earlier. <laughs> and um, so we're just pre-recording this in the as a backup, as it were, to in case our technology hasn't worked. And if it hasn't worked, then you're listening to it. But it's God's word we've come to listen to. And that's what's important. So let's just pray before we look at God's word this evening. Heavenly Father, we stand in need of your help. We stand in need of um, a touch of heaven. And Lord, we pray that you'll anoint my lips, but you'll anoint our ears. And you'll help us to grasp and understand and then to apply your truth to our hearts for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now, over the last few Sunday evenings, we've been looking at how we can stand and how we are carried by the promises of God. And the promises of God we've discovered are so precious and so wonderful and we've looked at how God promises to be with us. How he's promised that he will accomplish his will. How he's promised that he'll meet with us. Where he'll work where we cannot. He's promised to give wisdom. And he's promised to wisely and tenderly correct us. I quoted him in the very first week of this series. It's Sinclair B. Ferguson who wrote... The promises of God give light for the Christian path through life and food for the soul on the pilgrimage. That's what these promises do for us. They lighten our path as we walk with God and they feed our soul as we walk with him. It's the old Puritan Edward Lee 
The promises of God are a storehouse of blessing, a chest of goodwill bequeathed to us by our Heavenly Father. Remember the promises of God are for those who are in Christ, who are part of his family, who have come to put their trust and faith in the finished work of Christ. And the promises according to old Edward Lee are God's storehouse of blessing, his chest of goodwill bequeathed to us by our Heavenly Father. And to the grounds of our hope, the object of our faith, and the rule of prayer. And tonight we're going to look at another one of the promises of God. And the promise I want us to look at tonight is, is simply God's promise to give us strength in the face of temptation. And it's found in James chapter 4 and verse 7. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Now some of the most common but none of the less mistaken ideas that Christians have and have had for a long time is this. They think, I'm the only one who struggles with this particular sin. Or, no one struggles as much as I do. There's nothing Christians enjoy more than a good old pity party. No one goes through what I go through and if they do, not to the extent that I go through it. But listen to what the Apostle Paul says. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 in the New Living Translation. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can Endure. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And by the way, God has promised to make an emergency exit. But let's be honest. Some of us struggle with different temptations compared to others. The Bible's full of it. David struggled with lust. And sadly, he succumbed. Peter struggled with the temptation of fear. And again, he succumbed when he denied Christ. Abraham was in the same boat when he lied to Abimelech about his wife, Sarah. Now, now if, if you have people like David and Peter and, and Abraham struggling, then we're in good company. You see, the reality is that we find ourselves in a battle with the enemy of our soul. We find ourselves in a battle with Satan. And as Christians, when you come to put your trust in Christ, you become part of Christ's and God's army. That's what Ephesians 6 verses 10 to 18 teaches. That's why, and we're going to dip into it in a moment, that's why we're encouraged to put on the armour of God. It's what old saint put it this way. Satan is now as much our enemy as he is Christ's. He's now as much our enemy as he is Christ's. And having tempted Jesus, you read about it in Matthew chapter 4, Satan will now seek to tempt us. Jesus told his disciples that truth. Luke 22, 31, Jesus says to Peter, Simon, 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 Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. He tempted me, he's going to tempt you. Having tempted the parents of humanity in, in Genesis 3, Revelation 12 teaches he tempts the children as well. He's up to his same old tricks through every generation. So why do you think Paul warns us? In Ephesians 5 verse 5, be very careful in how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. The context is you have an enemy of your soul, so don't go around oblivious to the fact of that. And because we have an enemy of our soul, he goes on in chapter 6 verse 11 of Ephesians, put on the full armour of God 
so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Now let's pause for a moment. Stephen, that all sounds a bit scary. I didn't really understand that that's what I was signing up to when I put my faith in Christ. But although that may sound a little scary, it's important that we must remember who we're aligned to. We're aligned to Christ. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Remember who we're aligned to. Remember on whose side we find ourselves on. Now, when it comes to temptation, there's got to be quite a bit of background to this before we get into the promise fully, to understand what the promise fully means. When it comes to temptation, temptation comes by three agents. The devil sends three agents to tempt us, as it were. You read about that in 1 John 2 and verse 16. In the King James it says, For all that is in the world, the lusts of the flesh, the lusts of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. New Living Translation. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and the pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are of the world. The three agents that are used, the lusts of the flesh, a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for thrills, a craving for excitement, a craving for sex. Those are the cravings, that the lusts of the flesh. Then there's the lusts of the eyes, the cravings for everything we see. The riches of the world that the world offers. They've got a new car, so I want it. They've got a bigger house, so I want it. And we get the idea. And then there's the pride of life. The pride in our achievements and possessions. That's simply looking for the honour and praise of men. And those are the agents that Satan sends to tempt us. And if one fails, then Satan will use the other and try to bring us down. Now, if those are the three agents that Satan used, the two great enemies that help Satan advance his temp these temptations are the world and the flesh. Again, one old saint describes it this way. Pleasure from within, from without and the inborn, inborn traitor from within. That's the world in the flesh. Pleasure from without. Wanting everything the world, the thrills, the excitement, the riches. But the flesh is the inborn traitor from within. My old sinful nature will crave after those things anyway. And in light of all that, in light of that's what we face as Christians, no wonder Paul teaches in Galatians 5.17, the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite from what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite to what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other so you are not free to carry out our own, out your good intentions. Paul says there's this constant battle going on. And the battle is instigated by Satan himself. Now if, when I said it was a bit scary that we were in a battle, now you're, you're, you're terrified, aren't we? It all sounds too much. In the light of all of that opposition standing in front of this, how on earth are we able to stand? 
Go back to that verse in Luke 22 and verse 31. When Jesus tells Peter, Satan wants you. But, but, but listen, don't finish there. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. Oh, oh, okay, there's difficulties. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. It's that little phrase. Listen, Peter, Satan's out to get you. But I prayed for you. And I pray that your faith will not fail. And what you're going to learn through this experience is going to strengthen many more in the days that lie ahead. That's why God says to the church through Paul, 2 Corinthians 12, 9, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Listen, says God, I'm not sending you into this battle on your own. Actually, I'm going to give you everything you need to stand. And Paul would testify to that. Paul would go, listen, I know there's an enemy out there. I've experienced it in my own life. But listen to my testimony. Explain it to a young pastor. Explain it to someone who was going through difficulties and temptations and trials. 2 Timothy 4 verse 17. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength, says Paul. So that through me the message might be fully proclaimed. And the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack. And will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Timothy, this works. The promise that God has given. That he'll give us strength in face of temptation. I am going to give you a testimony this works so now listen to the testimony listen to the promise rather james 4 7 submit yourself then to god resist the devil and he will flee from you if this promise was somehow limited it might read submit to god resist the devil And he will usually flee from you. But it doesn't say that. It doesn't say he he may, if he feels like it, flee from you. If this promise was limited, it might read, do not resist the devil, for he'll not flee from you. So why bother? But that isn't what it says. James teaches, submit yourself then to God, Resist the devil and he will flee from you. God promises here, as everywhere else, his promises are inescapably true. They're spoken by one who cannot lie. So listen, let's go back to the promise. If we submit to God. What's he promise? He promises without question he will give us the strength to resist the devil until he flees from us. That's the promise. Why do you think Paul encourages us back in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 13? Therefore put on the full armour of God so that when the day of evil comes you may be able to stand your ground And after you have done everything to stand. See Paul teaches in Ephesians and James teaches here. That you and I have a part to play. Paul tells us we are to put on the full armour of God. James tells us we are to submit to God. That word submit is a military term. It simply means to get into your proper rank. It could translate this. Give your commander in chief your unconditional surrender. Remember, he's 
the captain of the hosts of the armies of heaven. And let me illustrate it this way. If you were in an army and you were on the parade ground and you were a young recruit and some young private came up to you and said, hi, there's a letter over there, go pick it up. You would go, go pick it up yourself, I'm not your slave, clear off. And then a young corporal came over and said, I'm telling you to go pick it up. You would go, why are you always picking on me? That's not fair. And you'd go over and you'd pick the bit of litter up. But imagine the sergeant came along and said, there's litter over there, go pick it up. You'd go, yes, sir. But what would happen if a major or a colonel walked out onto the parade ground? What would you do? You'd run around looking for litter to pick up. See, it all depends on whose authority you come under. And the word submit here is get into your proper rank. Remember that you're submitting to God. He's the commander in chief. We must unconditionally surrender to his authority in our life. And when we unconditionally surrender, we're to do it two ways. James tells us here, verse 10, humble yourself before God. You see, James knew it's possible to submit outwardly, but not be humble inwardly. We go, yes, I will, but inwardly we're going, oh. That's why we're told how to submit. We're to do it humbly. And we're also told in verse 8, it's all in the context of James 4, we're to come near to God and he will come near to us. We're to submit wholeheartedly to him, do it humbly and draw near. As A.W. Tozer says, nearness is lightness. And the nearer I am to him, the more like him I will be. Why are we to submit? Why are we to come humbly? Why are we to draw near? Paul teaches in Ephesians 4 verse 27, for this purpose, so that you do not give the devil a foothold. The devil will find any crack possible, any foothold possible. So James teaches, don't give him that. And you don't give the devil a foothold when you humbly draw near and submit unconditional surrender to the commander in chief. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. It's just picking up the same idea that Jesus taught in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. Again, when he was speaking to Peter, I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. When Jesus says, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not overcome it. That simply means that he'll give strength to withstand the enemy's assaults. No matter how long the siege, or no matter how hard the blow, he will help us overcome. He'll help us to stand, and he'll help us to withstand. You know, when it talks about, and the gates of hell, gates in Bible times were signs of a city's strength. It's a place where you find all the wise counsellors sitting. So when Peter heard Jesus say this, he understood the Lord's promise that neither the strength nor the wisdom of Satan will prevail against us. Because what's the promise? I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against us, will not overcome us. Or to grasp the truth that's written there. Or to grasp the promise that's given there for you and for me. One commentator put it like this, and, and, and I just love this whole idea. 
the devil is described in scripture as a roaring lion. But Jesus is described as the lion of Judah. The devil is described as a serpent. But Jesus is described as the bronze serpent of healing, lifted up and brought healing to a people. The devil is described as subtle and crafty. But Christ is described as all wisdom. Jesus teaches us to discern the wiles and subterfuges of Satan. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11. So Satan will not outsmart us. For we are familiar with his evil schemes. Jesus will help us to discern what's coming our way and what we face. The devil might be a lion, but Christ is a lion of Judah. The devil might be a serpent, but Jesus is the, is the bronze serpent who heals. The devil might be crafty, but Jesus is wisdom. The devil is strong and powerful, but Jesus, but God. 1 John 4 verse 4, you dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. The devil might be strong and powerful, but Christ is all powerful and almighty. So when he said, submit to me, resist the devil and he will flee from you. It's his strength. It's his power. Not yours. That's promised to make you overcomers. Listen to the promise. Psalm 91 verse 4. David got this. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor. And your protection. That's what the promises of God are. They're your armor and they're your protection. And when we face the temptation, when the enemy of our soul comes in to, and, and uses all his agency and all his guile and all his wiles to bring you and I down, he has promised to shelter us with his wings. He has promised to cover us with his feathers. He has promised us armor to be our armor and to be our protection. Jesus can do all this. Why? Hebrews 2, 14. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood. The Son also became flesh and blood. For only a human being, as a human being, could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil, who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set us free, all who lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. We also know that the Son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. Why is Christ able to give us the strength in temptation? Because he's been in your shoes. <laughs> Tempted in all points, just like you and me, yet without sin so can he give us the power can he give us the ability will he give us the strength that's his promise the strength to overcome sin and the devil is a present reality child of God may the Lord help us to believe it and enjoy the promise that God has given you and me. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that these will be more than just words. But you'll help us to live out to these truths. Help us to stand in the promise that you will give us the strength in face of whatever temptation the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, that you'll help us every day to humbly come, to draw near to you and submit ourselves to our commander in chief. 
we want to thank you that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We want to thank you tonight for Jesus, the captain of our souls. And we thank you in his precious name. Amen.